Okay, we're sitting here with Richard Bates, and we are doing an interview for TES Photography Productions. How are you today, Richard? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Tired, and I'm going to have a long night ahead of me. Okay, let's jump right into this. Um, how old were you when you first wanted to make films? Um, I started making them probably in sixth grade, I would say. So, what's sixth grade? Is that like 12 or something? 11 to 12. Yeah, 11 to 12. I mean, I used to go to my friends and stuff would be going to baseball camp. I used to go to film camp during the summers and stuff, so this is, this is pretty much it always for me. Okay, so are you hiding any short films from your teenage years that will eventually make it to light? I'm not hiding them. I love them. I, I would gladly show them this. Some pretty ridiculous stuff. Um, the, I, I, will, I am going to put the excision short up soon enough make it available on like iTunes or something like that um, but yeah I mean I made a <laughs> freshman year of high school I made like a World War One movie where we we were ex explosions the cops came we just you know a bunch of, bunch of little kids playing the war it was pretty insane I, I do I would love for people to see that it's it's pretty ridiculous and it has this very uh well i don't know i you you'll see i'll put i'll put it up eventually if people get a kick out of it it's pretty embarrassing okay what was your favorite horror movie i know you must get that a oh, lot no. but my favorite horror movie okay um that's really tough for me i like so many but um maybe suspiria I mean, it, it's always changing, but I, I like the film Suspiria by Dario Argento. I love Videodrome by David Cronenberg. Um, I, you know, Freaks. Freaks might be my favorite. Todd Browning's Freaks. Okay. Any particular di directors, as, as you were growing up, influenced your current work? Uh, Clive Barker a lot. And uh, Wes Anderson. And Todd Solons, he's a uh, sort of dark dramedies, and then uh, you know anyone and everyone in horror under the sun, you know Joe Dorowski, a lot of the dream sequence stuff, <laughs> decisions is inspired by him. So yeah, I mean anything and everything I see, I take from. I'm sure, I think most directors probably do. Okay, do you ever plan on stepping out of the uh, comedy horror genre? Yeah, yeah, in fact, um, I, I'm not sure what exactly my next film will be at this point, but I have one horror film and I have one that's very much just a comedy, it's sort of a, a big budget comedy. But I would do, I would do just about anything, I mean, if I like the characters, the story, I mean, I'm not, I love horror films. You know, I just love the movies in general, so, you know, I, there's nothing I would say no to if the script is good. I mean, I haven't, so far I haven't directed anything that I haven't written. I've gotten a few offers recently. I get to I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. What is your inspiration for your storylines? What is your method of, of jotting them down? Are they random thoughts? Or? Um, you know, I just, I'll make like all sorts of notes. Um, I do outline everything, so there is a, a structure, I mean, but as far as inspiration for like the stories and whatnot, it's all taken <clears throat> more or less from my life, I would say. All the characters and the uh, stories, you know, obviously there's a certain element of, you know, showmanship and I exaggerate anything and everything, you know, so that it plays bigger and more entertaining and exciting for the audience, but... Yeah, I mean, I'd say my life and my friends and my friends' families are pretty much inspiration for anything I've done so far. So when you're writing about a particular character in one of your stories, do you have actors already in mind when you write this, or how does that work? Um, I haven't. I didn't when I wrote Excision. Um, I did when I wrote this new one. I wrote... Um, I want to do another movie with Goobs, um, and so uh, Mark and I actually co-wrote this movie with uh, my friend Mark, 
who actually used to write for the show Criminal Minds. And he wrote the episode with, uh, with uh, how am I, how am I forgetting this? Holy shit, I just woke up. Um, <laughs> He wrote a hell of an episode. It's about the gypsies. You know the, the gypsies with the guy from Wishmaster in it? Andrew Deboff? What's his name? Oh, and they were kidnapping the little girl. Yeah, yeah. He wrote that one. Oh, that was a good episode. Yeah, so that was that was Mark's episode. And uh, we wrote this new one together. And it's good. I mean, uh, what, what was your question again? I'm, I'm, I'm in and out here. <laughs> do, do you um, Not even on, write on certain drugs. characters with actors in mind? Oh, uh, I, the only thing I've ever written with an actor in mind is this new movie. Because um, I wanted to just make it with friends, more or less. Um, so, you know, we got Goobs back, we got uh, John Waters back, just, you know, a bunch of, bunch of my pals are in the movie. And then, uh, you know, it's been 18 days, had fun. The same producer as Excision uh, put it together for us. So, you know, we, we had a hell of a lot of fun making this one. This one was, this one was pretty crazy. Okay, this might sound like a redundant question. I know you've been asked this before. Nothing will bother me. No. But how do you collect your cast members? I remember one article I, w I was reading about you. You uh, were talking about how you were collecting your cast before you even had your funding for the For movie. the first one, yeah. For the first one. It's, it's no secret that, you know, like a lot of independent films, they'll, they'll be partially financed. And then depending on who you can cast, you get more financing because an investor will inevitably be, you know, impressed by this actor or that actor and they either want to meet that actor or they want to be involved in a film that that actor's in. And so, you know, the more, uh, the more talent you add, uh, the more money, you know, uh, it's kind of available to you. So I, I raised, I got a lot of this talent as I was raising money on Excision. It was my first film, so I had nothing to my name. I mean, I I really, the, the way we put that together was more sort of entrepreneurship than how you would put an actual film together. I mean, I, you know, the producer would typically hire me, you know, to write and direct the project, but on Excision, I hired the producer, essentially. So, you know, I put a, it started out, I wrote an email to USC, the start producing program, and I said, I want to audition producers because I'm going to make this feature. And so I audition producers now. Now, on this one, I was hired by a producer. So, um, which will be the case for the rest of my life. I will be hired. Um, but that first one, you know, you got to you gotta get it made however you can get it made. Because, you know, if you don't get that first one made, you know, you're fucked. You are fucked. Okay. What is the story behind your newest title? How did well, you Well, I don't have a title yet. There's a working title, um, but that's not going to be the title of the movie. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna name it after I edit it. I don't know what I want to call it just yet. Um, so once I have it put together in the coming months, I'll have a name for it. But the working title was Adventures of Raymond and Becca Haunting an Edge City. City. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that and that was supposed to be sort of a play off like a, an old Party Boys book or a Nancy Drew book, you know, uh, even a sort of a box star children type thing. So we wanted it to be, have that, you know, the title Adventures of Raymond and Becca, book one, Haunting in Edge City, you know what I mean? Something like that to that effect. And then all the posters would be very sort of vintagey. Um, and the character's name was Raymond, and we had all these silly sort of poster ideas for Everybody Hates Raymond and Matthew's face on it. And just over saying everybody hates rain and stuff like that. So, you know, I, you know, we'll 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 see. I'm not quite sure what we're gonna call it just yet. Okay. Did you have any influence with who was in your current movie or even your last movie? Influence over casting? Yeah. 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 I cast both movies. Well, I I I have a casting director, but the director, I mean, I would say 70% of directing is casting. So I wouldn't make anything that I didn't have say over the cast. I had a brilliant casting director on the, my new movie, Scott David, who actually is the casting director on Criminal Minds. And uh, he's the best. That's I met Matthew, actually, because Scott David was the casting director on Excision. And then uh, and then we parted ways on that. But uh, I had met Matthew and I met a bunch of people. Um, 
and that's how actually my nephew and I became pals. But uh, as soon as I got this new movie, um, I brought Scott David back because he's a good dude. He's a, he's a really hard worker and he's, he's brilliant. I mean, he put, put together hell of a cast. So a casting director, more or less, what you'll do is, you know, you'll discuss the characters. Uh, actors will respond to this thing called the breakdown when you put names on it, right? Uh, roles, and then the casting director will go through hundreds of names and give you sort of the five or six that he thinks, you know, five, six, ten, whatever that he thinks are right for the part, and then the director, more or less on anything, picks between those ten, top ten for each role. It's always pretty much the director's uh, choice. Okay. I mean, in a, there, you know, on bigger projects and stuff, there are, you have to cast this person, you have to cast that. Um, it's one of the reasons that I prefer to make low budget movies because directors actually get to direct these movies. Like I actually, I have final cut, I have final cut on Excision, I have final cut on this new movie. So I, I am, it is, what you see is what is going to be 100% what I want it to be, um, contractually even it has to be, which is wonderful. It's the way movies used to be made in the 70s, you know what I mean? When they were a director's sort of vision. Uh, most studio movies, the director gets a cut, and then the studio can chop it up and turn it into whatever they want. And the director's name is something. So, the one good thing with my movies is they are actually my movies. Well, I'll clear that up. Can't go wrong with that. I had two personal questions I was going to go ahead and move on to. Um, we see a lot of pictures on Twitter, uh -oh. and I have to ask, what is the story behind the plaid jacket? The plaid jacket? You know what? It's sort of like a baby's blanket. I got it, and I just... In high school, I used to wear the same thing to school every day. And um, it wasn't like private, it was public school. But you know, typically I, I, I'm not a big like clothes person, so if I find something I like, I just wear it every day. Um, and I'll, like, I'll buy 10 of the shirts, 10 of the pants, and you know, I'll just wear it. So in high school, I wore the same thing every day. And uh, on Halloween, I actually came to school, and like half of my entire grade was dressed as me. And it was hilarious. It was awesome. So like, all my friends got everyone to dress like me. Um, so this, I actually, I got that plaid jacket because my producer bought it and he didn't like it and he was gonna like throw it away and I was like, no dude, are you serious? That's fucking awesome. And so I just took it. So I didn't even buy that. I just grabbed it and I was like, oh, I'm gonna wear this for a while. Okay. That's, that's then. You also uh, tweet a lot about the movie Spring Breakers. I what love is it. your, your it's fascination with it? It's perfect. It is the best, smartest, craziest, silliest commentary on the state of America's youth today that I've ever seen. And it's fucking perfect. I love it. It's the best thing I've seen. There are there are scenes in that movie that are so inspired. I love Harmony Corian to begin with, so I love all his movies. But I think this is his masterpiece for sure. I think it's brilliant. And I think it, it's it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. I was laughing from the beginning to the end. In fact, it's out on DVD now. You're gonna buy it. I'm waiting on Netflix to deliver you gotta, it. You do want to own this movie. Really? <laughs> it's too good. Okay. It's too good. Okay, we have a question from Jasmine Akhtar at Lintus Flower. She wants to know what was your biggest challenge in filming your last movie? And mate, also, what is the funniest moment off scene? Okay, the biggest challenge, I mean, quite frankly, it was just getting it financed. I mean, I lost financing on this movie four, four times. I was supposed to shoot it last October, so, um, or this past October, and I didn't get it made. Um, so, that's always, that's always the most difficult thing is procuring and then securing financing. You know, and then the funniest thing off set, I would say, goodness, you know, I was working so damn hard, I don't, 
I don't really... All the sort of moments of levity were on set, trying to think of something. I mean, on Cat, Cat's birthday, the producer had, like, some crazy-ass dude who may or may not have been a serial killer come to set and sing happy birthday in, like, a fairy outfit. <laughs> and I think everyone was more shocked than, uh, than entertained, but that certainly threw everyone off for a few hours. Um, I don't know, you know, we have a lot of fun making these, but we work super hard, so, um, I guess almost all the, everything is sort of, it's so fresh that I can't even really wrap my head around anything but the work right now. Next, next question is from Hoobler Fan Lori, and she wants to know, with your latest film, will it be hitting the film festival, or will you be looking for mass release? Well, here's, it will be hitting the film festival circuit, and then it's up to whoever purchases the film uh, what its release will be, you know? Um, if I if I had it my way, Excision, you know, would have gotten a, a wider release. It's difficult to release a film like that on the United States. Um, you know, we, we got a theatrical in the UK and in other places. So, um, you know, uh, this uh, this film is more commercial than Excision to a certain degree, so uh, it's my hope that we'll get a wider release after it's purchased. It, it's up to whoever purchases the film. It's out of my hands at that point. Last one. This one is from Loves the Beast. <laughs> she wants to know if she can get your phone number. <laughs> I'll run it by Noel, but I don't think she'd be too happy. <laughs> oh, no, although no, <laughs> no, no, Noel, uh, Noel's mad at me for not going to a party right now with her. So, so uh, if um, <laughs> if ever there was a, a time she'd be okay with me taking someone's number and getting the hell away from her over here right now. Uh, no, to answer your question, thank you, it's very nice. Um, trust me, you don't want to know me. <laughs> your life is much better without me in it. Next question. Um, you want to go ahead and uh, give any inspiration, in, inspiring words to your fans, future directors, writers, what do you have to say? Well, I mean, goodness, I mean, if you want to be a filmmaker, it's really not that difficult if you're willing to just work your ass off, I mean, and be ready to take a lot of rejection. I mean, I've lost so many movies so many times. I'm only 28 years old, and I, I mean, I feel like I've been shat on so much out here, but I never stopped, you know what I mean? You just have to persevere, I guess, um, and really throw yourself out there, but eventually you will get that movie made if you keep, if you just don't give up, uh, you know. A lot of people want to be filmmakers and when they realize how difficult it is, they quit. I mean, I remember in film school, even half the kids uh, who you know, wanted to be the next Steven Spielberg freshman year didn't want to make movies by junior year. Once they realize, you know, it's not what they, you know, they thought they were getting into um, in high school or watching the movies. This seems like fun, you know. Uh, it's, it's a hell of a lot of work. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Um, but God, it's so worth it when you see that movie play in front of an audience and you all sort of, you know, it's, it's a real connection. I mean, you can, you know, it's it's like reading your diary to a bunch of strangers and you guys getting each other. It's, it's a wonderful thing. It's the best thing, feeling I've ever had. So I'm not going to stop anytime soon. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time to interview with us. It's been our pleasure getting to know you. It is uh, my pleasure getting to know you, too. And uh, thank you for this uh, this wonderful afternoon at Starbucks. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you to your photography company for doing this interview. It's very exciting. Uh, TC Photography. T-E-S. Wait, say it again? T-E-S. T-E-S. Treasure shit. every smile. <laughs> T-E-S Photography, my favorite photography studio, <laughs> company, <laughs> one woman show, two woman show, whatever it is, whatever you guys are doing, it's great. So. Well, thank you. Thank you very much.